This unusual ingredient makes the best nachos. First, I'm gonna go over why I'm using pig ears for the nacho dish. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know that I'm no stranger to using unordinary ingredients in my dishes. Now, if you are a stranger to the channel, hi, I'm a cook named Matt. First off, why pig ears? Have you ever had pig ears? If you've never had them, it's a chewy, crispy texture. It's very different, very distinct. The flavor is just in your face pork. Delicious. Now I'm gonna use that for the vessel for my nachos today. At one of the restaurants I worked at, we used to serve a pig ear poutine, typically French fries, gravy, cheese. Today it's gonna be all the nacho fixings. Queso fundido, refried beans, guac. I'm gonna see if I can turn it into a nacho chip. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but if it does work, this is gonna make for a good video. Okay, first things first, we're gonna make ourselves a cheese sauce. Now I highly recommend that you grate your own cheese. When you buy the pre-grated stuff, it comes with anti-caking agents, which will affect the consistency of your sauce. For this sauce, I will not be using a roux. I will be using sodium citrate. The reason for using sodium citrate in a cheese sauce is because it creates a silky smooth texture and it will not break. I'll have it linked below if you wanna buy some. All of the dry ingredients go in with the milk. We bring it up to a simmer to hydrate the sodium citrate. Once it comes to a simmer, I add in my cheese. Before blending, I add in my apple cider vinegar. This is very important to create the smooth texture. Give it a blitz until silky smooth and you have a beautiful looking cheese sauce like this. You can store it in the fridge if you want and heat it up for later. Now on to the base of the nachos, the refried beans. And my refried beans have a secret ingredient. You're not gonna expect it. I dice an onion, doesn't matter how it is, it's gonna get blitzed. And in a nice stove cast iron pot, just like this, I heat it up and I add in a generous amount of olive oil. The reason for the generous amount of oil is because they're refried beans, fried, it's literally in the name. Also, you can cook off some pinto beans for this, sauteing the onions and the garlic just until translucent. At this point, I can add in my spices, cumin, black pepper. Then I add in my ranch style beans beans, the black label. I grew up on these. Cook those off a bit, and then we deglaze with our secret ingredient, espresso. Yes, espresso. It adds a nice bitterness to balance out the ranch style beans. Try it out. It's delicious. Don't knock it till you try it. The espresso goes in. Now, if you don't have an espresso machine, you could just use some black coffee if you like. Once again, give it a blitz. Not too much. We like our refried beans to be kind of chunky. Add seasoning to taste as needed. I also added some jalapeno powder because I like it a little bit spicy. That is how I make my refried beans. Now, I'm going to make a pickled red onion for you. So you'll never have to wonder again how to make pickled red onions. It's a staple ingredient that you should have in your fridge at all times. It's so versatile and it goes in everything. Keep the onions whole. I use a mandolin to get consistent slices on my onions. Now that little nub that you're left with, just toss that. Stay safe. Once you've got all your red onion slices, use a clean hand. It's very important to use a clean hand when working with pickles because mold and bacteria can grow. That goes into a clean container and then I create the pickling liquid. I like my pickles to be very acidic, so I do mostly rice wine vinegar, a touch of water, garlic, plus some red chili flake, black peppercorns, a bay leaf, salt, and then some maple sugar to taste. Bring the pickling liquid up to a simmer, then give it a taste. If you want it saltier, add more salt. If you want it more acidic, add more acid. I like to add cheesecloth to the top of my onion so it's easy to strain all the spices. Toss the pickling liquid in when it's hot and then store in the fridge. This will hold pretty much indefinitely. Pig ears. They're fairly cheap. It's such a satisfying texture to bite into. It's crunchy, chewy, has an all in your face pork texture. I like to cook mine off in an electric pressure cooker. I prefer electric pressure cookers to stove top. They're so much easier. The pig ears go in with some chicken stock for about an hour and 40 minutes until a knife can pierce through. Now here's a tip that we would use in the restaurant all the time. Take a sheet tray, wrap it in plastic wrap, and this is the perfect surface to put the pig ears on. And also save that stock. It's a perfect gelatinous stock for stuff like soup dumplings, which I might do a video on. So stay tuned for that. Also subscribe if you're not and like the video. The next day they should be completely cooled and gelatinized. I cut them into about Frito-Lay size chips. They're still kind of flimsy, so they're very easy to work with. Don't worry. Toss them into your fryer at around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Fry them up until crispy in small batches and keep agitating it because they do get kind of sticky. While lightly agitating it, strain it off once GBD, put it into a bowl, and salt it to taste. Just keep working in small batches until all of it is completely fried off. Be patient with this. It can be quite a messy job, but it is definitely well worth it. Now we have all of our nacho ingredients ready to go. I'm going to put them onto this stove cast iron plate. I think it's a perfect vessel for it. And then just layer everything 
everything in whatever order you'd like. I do my refried beans, my nacho cheese, tapatio sour cream, which is just sour cream plus tapatio and then whisked up, put into a little piping bag or some, some sort of squeeze bottle. We used to use this at one of the Mexican restaurants I worked at for the nacho dish. It was quite delicious. Then the rest of the nacho fixings go on top. Cilantro, jalapeno, pickled onion, you name it. Also, if you don't want to do pig ear nachos, you could just use all these fixings for regular nachos. Some regular corn tortilla chips, and all the rest of the nacho fixings. This recipe works just for that, and actually I made a breakfast burrito with all this stuff, and it was quite delicious. This is my nacho recipe. I know it's not ordinary, but that's what I'm about. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Like the video. I'll see you next Tuesday.